Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine if an equation represents direct variation, and if so, determine the constant. So the main important thing, whenever we're dealing with direct variation, I would highly recommend you just write down what exactly represents direct variation, or what is the equation for direct variation. And that is y equals kx. So now that you have it written down right in front of you, you can look at it, we can determine, as long as we have an equation in this format, the y equals kx, then it represents direct variation. So you can see y equals negative 2 times x. Well, negative 2 is multiplied by x. Yes. So this is direct variation. I'm going to write yes, because that's what I'm asking you. Does it represent that? Yes. And if so, what is k? What is our constant? Well, k in this case is negative 2. OK? So remember, notice that our equation is y is solved. So in this case, to determine if it's in direct variation, I have to solve for y. So to do that, I'm going to add a 2 to both sides. When doing that, I obtain y equals 4x plus 2. Well, you notice that direct variation does not have any addition or subtraction here, right? I have 4x, I can't have my um, constant times x being added by 2. So therefore, this does not represent direct variation. Over here, you might say, well, um, let's go and look if it's direct variation. Well, let's go ahead and solve first. So if I add a 5, to both sides, and I get 3y is equal to 10x plus 5. Divide by 3, divide by 3. I'm left with y equals 3 divides into both of those. 10 thirds x plus 5 thirds. Well, again, you're having adding, right? You can't add or subtract. Direct variation is just k times, var times your variable x. So that is not an example of direct variation. Now, this one gets a lot of students. Again, they see subtraction. They might say, no, it's not. Well, again. Don't always just rush to judgment. Solve for y. Put it in the form y equals kx. So if to do that, I need to solve for y. So I add an 8x to both sides. Therefore, then I have 2y is equal to 8x. Now, to solve for y, I divide by 2. And what I obtain is y equals 4x. So guess what? By solving for y, I've now put it into that form. So yes, it is in that form. It is an example of direct variation where k equals 4. In this example here, I just have my y's being divided by five, negative 5. So I divide by negative 5. Well, negative 5 does not divide into 8, but that's OK. We can have our constant be a fraction. My negatives go to a positive. So therefore, when you do this, when you just leave it like that, you can't reduce it any further. So I have 8 over 5. Um, that's going to be my constant. So yes, this is in the form of direct variation, where k is equal to 8 fifths. And then over here, again, I have the same thing. Uh, I'm going to divide by 7. Now, you might get stuck here and say, well, OK, this is y equals x over 7. That is not an example of direct variation. You're correct in the way that you're looking at it, because it's not, you know, you're not looking at it as multiplication. So it's very important for you to understand that, um, uh, let's see. 2 thirds x is equal to 2x divided by 3. Okay, Those are equivalent. Same thing. 1 half times 4 is the same thing as 4 divided by 2. So in reality, if I'm dividing by 7, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 7. So really, I can rewrite this because basically there's a 1 right here. right? So basically, that's a 1 divided by 7 being multiplied by x. So in reality, this is 1 7 times x. So yes, it is in direct variation form, where k is equal to 1 7. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you rewrite an equation in direct variation form and determine the constant if it is, in direct, if it is an example of direct variation. Thanks.